It was just a fool. Mother of all sorrow, we were running out. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to the AFRICAM show powered by explore.org. My name is James Hendry 
that is not a picture of me. That is a picture of a crocodile. I am not a crocodile. I am a human being. Although sometimes I feel like a crocodile, I think. I'm not really sure how a crocodile feels. Please do talk to us during the course of the next half an hour as we flip between the cameras here in Southern Africa to the highlights of what's going on as the early summer takes hold here in one of the most beautiful countries on planet Earth. Uh, before we kick off, we'll have say a few hellos. Hello, Michael S. Good morning from North Carolina, where I'm sure it's colder than it is here. Hello, Zygote. Aussie Jan says, had a question. Good afternoon. Have a question today. Why do hippos do roll over after being asleep or soaking just before they leave the waterhole? See, see on three different live cams and three different hippos. Aussie Jan, I think you'll find that hippopotami do that sort of roly-poly for the same reason that you stretch when you wake up. It's a way of just getting the blood flowing, stretching out the muscles, and yeah, I think it's just that sort of thing. There may be an element of playing about it, but I think it's largely just stretching before making use of muscles. Now, we are at Tau, which is in Mabitia, which is in the northwestern part of South Africa, a relatively dry area, although it's I think we may be able to try it. But I was looking at a picture of the deeper in the site, which is near Wild Angle earlier. And I said during the last time I did this show, how it would be almost impossible to see if you believe how green the world would get at the first moment. And so it hasn't come apart. There are crocodiles here lurking in the sea. Obviously, it's too hot, possibly too hot in the water. Here he lives in shallow water. I know it's shallow water, but it can. Um, apparently, I don't sound okay. Do I sound okay now? How about now? Do I sound okay now? And um, it was probably my fault. I was probably sitting a little bit far away from my microphone. Can you hear me now? Great. Okay, thank you much. Very much. Sorry, that's my fault entirely. For those of you who didn't hear me, hello. And uh, I am Dan Henry. I'm sorry, I was sitting far away from my microphone. That is a crocodile, and there was a weaver here. Actually, a weaver, by the way. I didn't see what kind of a weaver it was. Anyway. You say hi, hello Bob from Kalamazoo, yes, today you say congrats, thank you, yes, that's for the five-week-old child that is currently uh, terrorizing my poor wife in the room next door. Um, Mary Momo, hi James from beautiful Hot Springs, Arkansas, always appreciate your humor and knowledge. Well, I shall try and be humorous and knowledgeable today as we look at this crocodile who is not doing very much. So as I was saying before I was notified that my sound was dreadful, this hippo lives, or it's not a hippo, it's a crocodile. This crocodile lives in a pan of water that is very shallow. And on account of the shallowness of the water, I suspect it gets very hot and unpleasant at this time of the year. And so this crocodile has eschewed the water to come and lie in the shade of what looks like a buffalo thorn or Sisyphus mucronata. Everybody around the world should say Sisyphus mucronata three or four times a day just to calm themselves. Sisyphus Mukranata. Okay, and that's all I have to say about this. Shall we perhaps uh, move on to another one? Apparently, Tembe has nyalas, so let's go there. Certainly likely to be more active than this vast reptile. Oh, we're zooming out, and now we're at Tembe with the nyalas. Now, Tembe. When I visited there some, when was that? It's been around September, I think. Yes, it was. About September. Uh, September was very browny. There wasn't much green grass at all. In fact, there was none. This particular waterhole was smaller than it is now. And it was amazing. There was almost no grass anywhere near it. And now the rains have come. The spring flush has come through and everything looks verdant and green, which it is much of the time up in northern KwaZulu-Natal where this waterhole sits at Tembe Game Reserve. Two youngish male nyalas just 
adult. They're not particularly um, large. Their horns would be wider set. So I think they're probably two young bulls who are living their lives and enjoying each other's company before they get big and start fighting over girls. Happens with all, happens to the best of us. Good day from Becky. You say good day from West Virginia. Love this show. Well, we love having you with us. Thank you, Becky. Hello all from Suki in the UK. Hello, Suki in the UK. Good to have you with us. Linda Bliss, you're watching from Pennsylvania in the United States, where it's 31 degrees and sunny. Linda Bliss, uh, those of you who are living in the United States, of course, operate in the imperial system, which uh, defies logic. But 31 degrees to us out here would be quite steamy. To you, it is, of course, just below freezing. How beastly. I'm sorry it's so cold there. I can assure you that at Tembe it will be a little warmer than that. I'm guessing probably around 72 degrees, but I think there's a bit of a storm blowing in there. There are some impala, and if we're lucky, we'll see an impala lamb. In fact, I think the impala, the nyala, the first nyala bull has just gone past a little lamb. There's a little lamb running now. That's very cool. Very nice to see the little impala lamb. They're now into their birthing season and there'll be hundreds of them all over the place in South Africa and anywhere else where they grow. Well, that's not actually true. In East Africa, they don't have a defined birthing season that they do here. Okay, uh, for Betty Price, you say, oh, you're watching from Granbury, Texas. Thank you, Betty Price. Um, thank you for your greeting. Uh, apparently, there's some water bucket tau. Zygert says there are Cape turtle dubs calling. Are there? Can't hear any Cape turtle doves. I can hear a emerald spotted wood dove going. I think there's a, a, a an elephant at Naledi Dam. So let's go there. Elephant, elephant. Let's go to the elephant. I haven't seen an elephant for a while. There we go. There are two elephants at Naledi Dam, two bulls who are enjoying a drink. And if ever you wanted evidence that elephants do not enjoy muddy water when fresh water is available, there you have it. That is fresh water in the well, and it is dirty water in the pan that is fed by that well. So elephants really do like fresh water. You'll find something like a predator uh, like a leopard, which could easily get to the fresh water in that well, won't bother. They'll go straight to the dirty stuff. They don't really care. But elephants show a particular liking for clean water. They're also not particularly conserving of said water. Michael S., you say that croc is like my boss, just being lazy. Yes, Michael. Isn't it distressing to see such... Now, this is interesting interaction we're having here where elephants put their trunks in each other's mouths. That is a form of greeting. I am glad that I do not have to put my nose in a friend's mouth in order to greet him or her. I'm sure that all of my friends are very glad that I don't put my nose in their mouths for greeting. Hello, Sabzada Faisal Atari from Pakistan. I hope that I'm saying your name correctly. Lovely to have you with us. Very nice to have you all the way from Pakistan here. We don't have many Pakistani viewers, which is uh, so it's great to have you. Tell all your friends. And Shirley Swimmer, as we watch these elephants in the low felt, where it is probably at least, I would say, 32 degrees Celsius or so, so pushing 87 Fahrenheit, you say it's 36 in Oklahoma. Yes, Linda Bliss, 72 Fahrenheit sounds perfect. It is perfect. Good temperature up at Tembe. This elephant is now scratching his trunk. I'm thinking about life. Just never seem to be in a hurry. This, which I think is, well, possibly a, an indication of how we should all be living. You're all now starting to talk about your um, about your cold situations in the northern hemisphere. You could always move down south here. Yeah? I think we'd probably appreciate having you. 
So this is two young bulls. They are not yet, um, probably not yet particularly big. They're not yet able to fight for mating opportunities. They are forced to live the life of celibate bachelors at the moment, which, well, you know, it's just rites of passage, really, when you're this age of an elephant, and soon they'll be old enough to fight for mating opportunities. Though they won't try at this age, I would put them both at around about 25 years old, getting close to optimum age. This elephant is now just playing. He's not drinking. He's just sucking water into his trunk, spraying it around. Now he's having a bit of a drink. I suppose a little bit like when a child blows bubbles into their milkshake. Uh, Mary Momo, you want to know where does the fresh water in the well come from? It comes from under the ground. There's a borehole here, or what you'd call a well, I think, if you're in the United States. So they just drill a hole in the ground and hit an aquifer of some description and then water pumps up to the surface. So that's quite nice. I think that's where it comes from here. Uh, it, eventually, I mean, ultimately it must come from a borehole, but it may be pumped here from the borehole. I don't know how close the borehole is to this particular pan, despite the fact that I've been there. I should probably know that. Of a rough lab on it, and it didn't take a great deal before he managed to pop it in over and break it. Theresa B, you say hello from Chile, Indiana. Yes, hello. Actually, hello, Jackie Gosler, and good morning from St. Augustine, Florida. I hope all is well with you in St. Augustine, Florida. I think this is just a pleasant sort of afternoon for this elephant. He's probably eaten enough. He doesn't really feel like he needs to make too much more of an effort to eat. There's lots of nice green grass around, as you can see around the pan there. Although they haven't had a huge amount of rain here. You can see that by the picture of the grass, but there'll be lots of fresh leaves and that sort of thing. And that means that this elephant doesn't have to eat all day. He's probably eaten enough. And he's literally just taking a bit of a time out and enjoying himself. Sadly, I'm not hearing a great number of birds. A lot of the migrating species are back. Oh, that is an artistic shot. Maybe let's move to another sighting. Perhaps let's go and have a look at what's going on at the Ulifants River, shall we? Same reserve as this elephant is on, but just on the river. There we go. Oh, and we can hear the woodland kingfisher. Chip. Brrr. A herald of the summer. And look how full that river is. So there's been quite a lot of rain throughout the country over the course of this period. And by this period, I mean the sort of early summer. And the Olifants River is now very high which is great. That's quite nice to see. It does mean that there's not going to be a huge amount going on there, I don't think, because, well, there aren't those little banks and things that animals might come and sit on. There's a Cape Turtle Dove calling. And I can't see what that little bird is there flipping about the surface. All right, we're going to head now to Tau, and we're going to have a look at some water bucks. And I suspect they'll be quite close to some water on account of the fact that it has been raining and there is obviously a water hole at Tau. Now, this is what I was talking about. You see how green this area is. When I last did this show about four or five weeks ago, this was a sort of almost desolate plain, rocky plain that looked like nothing on earth would ever grow there. But lots is growing there now. Not much grass, and that's not unusual. There's nothing. There's very little grass, quite a lot of pioneer vegetation, uh, and that's because most of the grass gets eaten as soon as it comes up, and the area around these waterholes are often slightly overgrazed. 
And then there's some zebra, which is very nice to see at the background. Some zebra, just one zebra. And there is to all water buck enjoying the new flush. Goodness, there's huge action to all the cameras at the moment. Let's pop back to elephants because there's a baboon and some hippopotamus. And I would like to see baboons because baboons are always entertaining. Here we go. Oh, a hippo out the water, bush bucks, and one lonely baboon bottom right of your picture. Hello, baboon. I was shown a clip yesterday, I, th I think it was in Chobe, of a baboon foraging on the side of the river like this, but not paying attention, not concentrating. And he was taken out by a crocodile. And it was at least 50 meters away from the water's edge. And the crocodile just snuck up slowly, slowly on this baboon and then took him out. And I was absolutely amazed. I'd never seen a crocodile strike so far from the water. Anyway, baboon is now gone. And we've got these, these bushbuck. Mona Lee Robinson, you say the bushbuck is pregnant. Well, your ability to discern the gravid or ungravid state of a bushbuck all the way from California is certainly better than mine. But entirely possible that they're pregnant. Oh, sorry, that's not from you, Mona Lee. It's from Aiden in Cape Town, who says that the bushbuck is pregnant. Well, the same stands. Very impressive. Um, I think he's probably right, actually. They do look quite pregnant. They look quite fat. And at this time of the year, you would expect them to be pregnant and possibly about to give birth. That's very cool. So maybe we'll have some little bush bucks around there fairly soon. Now, I would say this was unusual, having a hippo pop to moose out of the water at this time of the day. It's quarter past four in the afternoon. It's not winter. It's early summer, it's hot there, and why this hippo should be out of the water now and grazing, I'm not sure. Um, I think hippos have got us fairly confounded in many respects as to their behavior, because it's not all often obvious, it's often not obvious why they do the things that they do. Carol Parker, hello from Ohio. You, you're on early in my neck of the woods. Thank you for sharing all videos. I learned so much. I'm glad you learned from us. Thank you, Carol. Michael S., is it your rainy season now? Michael, yes, it's the rainy season here in summertime uh, in most of South Africa. There is a region that has a winter rainfall area and a sort of transitional region between the two. So in the Eastern Cape, you'd have kind of transitional rainfall, summer and winter, and then in summertime and then in winter it'll rain in the Cape, in the Western Cape. Teresa B, the river looks so, looks and sounds so peaceful. It does, Teresa B, I agree with you, it does. At what age do male elephants have their first must? Pat. Um, Pat, normally elephants have their first must at a, probably around about 18, but it's a very short one and then it gets progressively longer as they get older and apparently sometimes can last up to sort of seven or eight months when they're big old bulls of about 45 or so. Belinda, you say, hello, James, hello, hello. Linda Bliss, there are little guys in the foreground. Oh, there, I'm not sure what we're talking about there, but thank you, Linda. There's a baboon, a chakma baboon, I think. Is she got a baby on her? I think there's a baby stuck to her belly. I can't see exactly, but yeah, I think there's a youngster there. My picture keeps moving. Either that or she too may be pregnant. Yeah, it looks like a female. So the rest of the troop will be around here somewhere. It does sound nice there on the banks of the Olifants River. Cool. There's a, another baboon. That looks like a male. Some bush bucks, the two pregnant bush bucks. And although that looks like there's a very peaceful relationship here, it's not always a very peaceful relationship because sometimes what you'll find is that when these little bush bucks give birth, a big male baboon will happily come and steal their lambs. And well, if you happen to be a bush buck mother, that is not going to predispose you to loving 
baboons. Baboons like to eat meat at this time of the year. They get hold of impala lambs relatively frequently. It's quite nice for them. Carol Parker, you say he must be very hungry. I think you were talking about the hippo. I agree. I think he must be very hungry. And perhaps he was out late last night, perhaps fighting in a territorial battle, perhaps just keen to find himself needing need before dinner tonight. Sometimes I feel like I need to feed before dinner as well. Hmm. The baboons are being slightly unentertaining for baboons. Normally they are extremely entertaining. Let's go back to Tao, where there are some zebras, and see what's happening with them. There are the zebras in the verdant green pastures of Madikwe Game Reserve. They're having a little gallop around. They will be enjoying this lovely green growth. Very much, I suspect. Some weaver nests. And you can hear totally different birds from the birds that we've been hearing on the Olifants River. This is a drier region of South Africa. And I would say the average rainfall here is probably around about 450 millimeters a year, which is 45 centimeters, which is roughly 18 inches. In fact, I think it's almost exactly 18 inches. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It is exactly 18 inches. Roughly 18 inches here. And the low felt just has a bit more than that, about 600 millimeters, which is 24 inches. And we can hear the ever loyal blacksmith lapwing going tink, tink, tink. The ever irritating Egyptian goose having a fight in the background. And two young water bucks just rubbing heads. There's a young male and a young female. Young male with the little horns, and the young female without the little horns. Oh, and then a much bigger bull with a younger bull. And that's just a bit of sparring. And I don't think there's anything too aggressive going on there. Nice. It's nice to have a peaceful time in the bush. Sometimes it's nice to see a whole lot of action. Sometimes it's just nice to have a quiet time. Michael S., you say, I'll feel like that hippo after the Thanksgiving hip holidays. I'm sure you will. We don't have Thanksgiving here in South Africa. Norma Carbonaro, you're watching from Kissy Me in Florida. Is Kissy Me a real place? Really? Kissy Me? Is that a really? Is that a real place? That's amazing. Nice to have you with us, Norma Carbonaro. Can't hear anything for the Egyptian geese shouting the odds. Also, a red knobbed coot you can hear in the background going. <laughs> Zebra's just kind of playing. I think they're doing much the same as these water bucks. They're just playing the sort of joys of spring, if you like. We don't really have spring or autumn in many parts of the country. Winter ends one day and the next day it's hot, so you just have summer almost immediately. But I suppose if we did have a spring, it would be round about now. We'll be coming to the end of it, actually. Certainly one of my favourite times of year, if not the favourite time of year for me. And not a lot of predatory action here, mainly, I suspect, because it's, well, it's full daylight, and it's hot. And so the predators will be lying under bushes, and they may well visit this waterhole during the course of the night. But... If you do keep an eye on these cameras often, or generally and all the time, 
you'll find that there are fewer and fewer animals visiting the waterholes perhaps and that's simply because it's so wet everywhere so there are little pans and water sources everywhere now and so animals don't have to come down to the concentrated water areas to drink all the time. Laura Reed, you said uh, my description of the rainfall, the rainfall in Scotland. Yes, while well, my father lasted four years there before he returned to South Africa. The rainfall there was too much for him to handle. There are the Egyptian geese. You can see some white-faced whistling ducks there. That's nice to see. And a blacksmith lapwing now exiting stage left. And the zebras seemingly unconcerned about the heat of this early summer's day. Let's see if we can see. I wonder if we're allowed to have a closer look at the water, see what other birds there might be there. Let's have a look across the water. The Egyptian geese would shut up for two seconds, we might be able to hear something else. There was a red knobbed coot, I saw one, but it's gone now. Zoom and focus, more zebras coming down. Certainly no shortage of zebras there at Tau. More Egyptian geese shouting the odds. All right, let's go back to elephants. We'll leave these noisy gooses and see what else is happening on the river. Ooh, dun, 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 da, da, da. elephant coming down towards the sycamore tree, sycamore fig tree, and almost certainly going to chase the hippopotamus into the water. Why is he going to chase the hippopotamus into the water? For no reason other than he can. That's very nasty, Mr. Elephant. Not the same elephant we've been looking at. And they just are relatively un intolerant of many other animals. And if the water gets short, not on a river like this so much, but in other pans, you'll find elephants chasing lots of other creatures away. Carol Parker, you just pointed out that the zebra got a swift kick in the face there at uh, Tau while I was looking for birds. Thank you for that. And as we watch this much larger elephant bull, I would say at least 35, walking across or along the bank of the elephant's river, Norma Carbonaro says, yes, indeed, it is a real place. She lives in a place called Kissimi, outside the Orlando area. I'm really just enjoying the live scenery. Well, good. We are enjoying it too. One day I shall have to visit Kissimi and see if someone will kiss me. Ha 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 Good. Very pleasant scenes as this elephant wanders along, baboons feeding gently in the bushes. And on average, a very peaceful wilderness scene here, the kind of thing that draws people to nature because it takes out the stresses and strains that we inflict on ourselves with our lifestyles. You might be able to hear some human noise in the background. I think that's just a lodge close by. Oh, lovely sound of the woodland kingfisher there. All right, chaps. Thank you very much for joining us on the AFRICAM show, powered by explore.org. It's been lovely to chat to you and lovely to see all the animals and scenery that we have here in the early summer around South Africa. Until next time, bye-bye.